in this video, I just wanted to start and touch base with everybody regarding that we are going to be starting with WordPress. So first thing about WordPress is one common misconception is there are actually two WordPress sites. Um, by default, a lot of people want to type .com when in actuality, the developer's website is .org. So big thing to uh, point out is like, what's the differences whenever you're starting with these? A lot of folks may say, well, .com seems like it's practically the same as .org. This is somewhat true. Uh, the .com is, however, you're sacrificing a lot of the PHP and backend development control that you would get if you were hosting on your own servers, as far as themes, as far as plugins, and all of these elements we will get to later in the course. But it is much easier to set up. It is way more drag and drop. You can get up and running faster. You really don't need to know any form of programming. It's a really great option for, as I mentioned here on the slide, for an enthusiast. Or if you need to have something up quickly, also to the domain name that you would type in would have wordpress.com in the name. So if you wanted to have like a website or a web space where you had a specific URL like mycompany.com, you'd have to pay extra and kind of have a redirect from that URL to go to wordpress.com where your website is located. The .org, on the other hand, it actually provides the framework and a lot of the tutorial and reference information that the community has built. So it is kind of where you would go that if a company came to you from a freelance perspective or if you were on a web development team for a company and they said to you, hey, we want to make a website and we want to use a content management system, you would want to go out and I'll show you here you'd want to go to the wordpress.org site so you can actually get and download WordPress. The big thing with this though is remember that you are actually just downloading the WordPress site, we can almost call it package or folder. It's You are not gonna be able to do anything or run anything because it uses PHP, which is a server side script you're not going to be able to actually do anything with it unless you have something like XAMPP or MAMP installed. WordPress.com, on the other hand here, gets you out of that. So you are, though, I can take you to plans and pricing here, you're relying on letting WordPress.com handle all of kind of your heavy lifting for you. And you can see they do have different options here as far as each item and you know they're not terrible plans but if you truly want or if the company truly wants to have full control you're going to be coming to wordpress.org and actually in this case you know clicking on get wordpress and downloading the latest version of wordpress so Continuing on here, you know, we kind of talked about that. I gave you some of uh, the reference materials here as far as what you can do. So when we're starting out here, as we're diving into our course now, it's really starting to get into the nitty gritty. Pretty much every time you're getting ready to work with a content management system, and if you want to work on it locally, you're going to need two items. You're going to actually need the content management system, be it WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, whatever you're working with. And then you're going to have to have something like MAMP or XAMPP installed so that you can actually test locally without having to go out and buy server space. I do often get questions from students that, you know, should I buy a ser server space? Um, you can get server space pretty cheap. Uh, however, I mean, for the scope of this class, if you're looking at this from a, you know, I want to go into web design, but I'd rather do graphical or front end development, you're not really going to need that server space for testing. If you're focusing more on front end, things like the JavaScript libraries, HTML and CSS, you don't really need those elements. You don't need server space. However, if you decide that, yes, I want to get more into database, PHP, uh, server-side development, ASP, um, then you might want to think about it in the future. It can't hurt anything. Um, but for this course, you don't actually need to buy server space. 
Now, the last thing just to point out, because one of your main projects here that while you're practicing with each of these elements or each of these uh, content management systems is that what are you going to make a website on? So, you know, there are many options. Uh, I point out here, you know, some of the more common ones that I've gotten in the past that folks, you know, will kind of turn in. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have so many options when it comes to these content management systems that you can plug and play. It helps to kind of think about, you know, what exactly do I want this website to do? Do I want it to be a blog? Do I want it to be some sort of portfolio? Do I, am I selling something? Is my company selling something? All of these sorts of things come into play as far as what you need to think about. So again, in closing, I give you a little bit of background as far as, you know, what you need to get started. Um, and then outside of that, you'll have your other access as far as, you know, going through what MAMP and AMP, XAMP installed. And then we're also going to have a video as well on how to actually install WordPress.